is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. Thanks for joining us at 7. I'm Rafael Sanchez. We begin with peace of mind for a Shelby County family whose roof was mistakenly stripped of its shingles while they were camping. And only on RTV6, we are getting results. Kevin and Shelly Giles welcome the generosity of a Johnson County-based company which helped fix this problem. SPG Roofing and Restoration reached out to RTV6 after hearing the plight of the couple on Tuesday. Today they cleared that roof and installed new shingles. Kevin Giles believes a separate company mistakenly removed his roof because he had packages of shingles outside his home. And there they are. After 10 hours, SPG fixed the mess that was left behind. It has worked out more than I could ever ask for or believe. It feels like a dream. We just wanted to give back to the community and uh, help somebody that was uh, in need of our help. A crew of seven was able to complete that job today. We want to thank SPG Roofing and Restoration for reaching out to us and using their, their skills to save this family between four and five thousand dollars. And just a few minutes ago, the Giles family texted me this picture of the roof installation. It is now complete, as you can see. Now, Kevin and Shelley have joked about thinking twice about going on another vacation anytime soon. The missing roof was enough of an unwanted surprise. If you are faced with a problem that affects your quality of life and have nowhere else to turn, connect with us here at RTV6. Email us at workingforyou at rtv6.com and we'll see if we can help you and your family. Now at 7, it is still summer. As you know, you can feel it. The heat, though, has no interest in moving on. Let's check in now with Storm Team 6 Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory with an update on all this warm weather. What's and up, KG? In that heat and humidity, we've had some thunderstorms bubble up. That view to the west was beautiful. To the north, lightning, and just in Hancock County near Greenfield. I'll go back to that in a second. Um, from north of Monticello to Logansport to Peru, we've had repeated thunderstorms in this area. They're drifting north and east. Northern half then of Grant County, north of Marion, with some heavy rainfall. These are rainfall estimates between two and almost three inches of rain in isolated spots there. And the closest thunderstorm to the metro area just north of Greenfield, drifting northeast. We'll talk about the changes ahead coming up. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much. Advocates tell RTV6 that they are concerned about the lack of answers surrounding an oil spill in the White River last week. The Indiana Department of Environmental Management says it is still working with Citizens Energy to identify the source of that discharge. It happened through the city's combined sewer outfalls near Bluff Road and West Southeastern Avenue. It is also unclear how big the September 3rd spill was. The Hoosier Environmental Council, the White River Alliance, and the Friends of White River are all demanding answers and accountability. Investigators are still working the case of a hit and run that killed a boy last night on the city's northeast side in one neighborhood there. Investigators say 14-year-old Luis Patino was riding a motorized mini bike on West Coyle Street when a car hit him from behind, killing him. The neighborhood is near North Michigan and West 62nd Street. The driver ran from the car, but authorities say the vehicle was registered to a person who lives nearby. They're now working to see if any charges will be filed in this case. As a nationwide ban is considered on flavored e-cigarettes, doctors here locally, uh, they're sharing their concerns as they treat kids for vaping-related injuries. Riley Hospital for Children says the latest numbers show nearly one in three high school students has vaped in the last 30 days. The hospital has treated at least five cases of vaping-linked illnesses in juveniles recently. And Indiana saw its first vaping-linked death last week. Health experts say the big increase in the last months of vaping-related injuries is a bit complicated. Why we're seeing that increase is a little bit unclear. We're not sure if we're recognizing it more or if we're actually seeing an escalation in the number of uh, respiratory-related illnesses or a combination of the two. Riley says the majority of cases we've seen in our state have had some exposure to THC, but those patients have almost mostly been vaping regular nicotine. It may be several months before health officials are able to figure out 
what with is what within the vaping process is causing this situation. After the White House's announcement to ban all flavored e-cigarette products, the Vaping Association is voicing some concerns, saying that ex-cigarette smokers will be at risk of going back to smoking. And it adds that prohibition has never worked in the U.S. You can talk about inappropriate marketing, you can talk about restricting flavor names, marketing, but just getting rid of these products, it's going to do nothing to combat the black market contaminated THC products that are causing lung illnesses and will actually just open up a brand new, potentially multi-billion dollar black market. The association has said that the majority of patients were vaping THC products, possibly in the black market. The CDC is still investigating this case. A public school undergraduate degree is 213% more expensive today than it was in the late 80s. It's no wonder almost 19 million students applied for federal financial aid in the year 2017-2018 school year. Our Chris Welch is exploring solutions to a reported loophole that could be taking money from people who need it the most. You know, my reaction was, I think, disappointment, but not surprise. Emily Goodman works for a nonprofit that helps low income students finish college. So you could understand why she'd be disturbed by these recent articles from ProPublica and the Wall Street Journal exposing a loophole in the federal qualifications for financial aid. Wealthy families are giving up guardianship of their high school students, usually in their junior or senior year, to family members, to friends, to co workers in an attempt to make college more affordable. See, by giving up guardianship, the student is given independent status, meaning they'd now qualify for more financial aid since their parents' income can no longer be considered. They're really taking away opportunity for our low-income students in our state who may be the only access to college that they're going to, the only pathway to college is, is through state financial aid. According to a ProPublica investigation, the students in question were accepted at a number of institutions, including within the University of Illinois system. But it gets even worse. According to reports, the more than 40 families in question were from one of the wealthiest places in the state, Lake County. Home to gated mansion after gated mansion. These parents that really have the ability to pay are robbing um, the dreams of, of certain families and their children the um, ability to go to college. State Representative LaShawn Ford admits that the practice is technically not illegal, so financial aid rules would have to be changed on a federal level. But on the state level, lawmakers plan to crack down on private college admissions businesses that allegedly turned parents on to the practice. So what we're going to do is look at regulating those um, businesses and make sure that they are licensed so that we can have some type of restrictions on how they guide and drive people to um, these type of immoral um, behavior. But Justin Drager with the National Association of Student Financial Aid Administrators says officials must be careful with how they fix the loophole. What we don't want is an overcorrection that then makes it really difficult, if not impossible, for students who are in legitimate legal guardianships to qualify for financial aid. But at the end of the day, this loophole really only further exposes the elephant in the room. If people have to go through um, measures to lie, cheat, and rob other people of opportunities to go to college, college is not affordable. Reporting in Chicago, I'm Chris Welch. We're about 53 minutes away from this as we continue our coverage of Democracy 2020. The top Democratic candidates for president will go head to head in their next debate. And you can watch it right here on RTV6. This is the third Democratic debate of the campaign, but the first taking place on just one evening. Now, the rules to qualify for the debate were stricter this time around, and 10 candidates will share the stage there at Texas Southern University. Again, the third Democratic debate is from 8 to 11 right here on RTV6. We're now just barely under 52 minutes away. Still ahead on the news at 7. Local students are combing their creativity with new business skills to get a head start in the fashion industry. But first, let's check in your forecast with Kevin Gregory. And we'll get a closer look here, but one thunderstorm complex just northeast of Greenfield, south of Muncie, and then near Marion. What changes arrived just in time for the weekend? Coming up. Only on RTV6 News. This is RTV6 News at 7, working for you. A 
right, time to check your forecast. And Kevin Gregory, I spent most of my day in Shelby County at the home of Shelly and, and Kevin St Giles and the roof, They're working on their new roof. It was so hot. So a shout out to that crew today that around one o'clock was able to get all that work just done. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. They want to get going while it's still cool. Yeah. So you work early morning and go as quickly as you can. We'll all get a break Saturday. Okay. Notice I just said Saturday, not for a, <laughs> for a long period of time. 91 today, not a record temperature. The record goes back to the 1800s, 1879, I think off the top of my head. 96, the record for today. Hancock County, we have a thunderstorm. You go up into Grant County and then around Peru and Logansport. Let's investigate a little closer. Uh, this in the northeast portion then of Hancock County headed towards Shirley. We'll drift into uh, areas southwest of Newcastle, looks like in Henry County. And then surrounding Muncie, we've got some additional downpours and that's what they are. Humidity is high. The atmosphere is primed for heavy rainfall. It's just that very few of us will see any rain tonight. But when it rains, it pours to the north of Marion and northwest of Hartford City. That may curve in there. Our risk for any severe weather is low, but we have had a couple of thunderstorm warnings. Damaging wind and hail would be the main threats with the storms for the next couple of hours. Then we'll calm things down through the overnight. 91 in Peru, 86 in Bloomington, temperature 88 in Muncie with those nearby thunderstorms. Notice what comes back up tomorrow should be a more widespread basis. The cold front will be a trigger for the thunderstorms. Temperatures by the time we get midday, already middle, maybe upper 80s, but they will slide as the wind direction changes out of the west and comes northwest. They're sure thin line of thunderstorms. We'll see how widespread they become, especially to the east and uh, northeast during the afternoon hours tomorrow. That's where there's a marginal or low risk for severe storms. Always love this. Let me just show you how the temperatures fall off late tomorrow into Saturday. The humidity will be lower as well. High temperatures first half of the weekend will be the coolest. 81 Saturday, Sunday 85, and we're right back where we started. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, upper 80s with high humidity and like a dry stretch of days as well. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much. Coming up in our nightly hiring Hoosiers report, a company is giving college students a head start in the workforce, launching a high-tech gadget to protect homes across Indiana. Plus, uh, tips to make the most of your job fair experience. That's all ahead right here on RTV6. Absolutely ends Monday at Ashley Home Store. As companies expand in our state, Indiana is poised to hire nearly 1 million people over the next several years. At RTV6's Hiring Hoosiers campaign, it aims, we aim to connect people in our state to all of those jobs. Today, as a growing company prepares to launch a new product, it's already proving its commitment to college students and recognizing their value in their workforce now and into the future. Tonight, RTV6's Mark Mullins introduces you to Drybot and the people making it. William Gallagher is part of a team working on a new device hitting the market next month that could provide peace of mind for homeowners around our state. And I think it's going to be probably one of our best products that we've ever uh, launched and by far the most successful. The motorsport engineering student at IUPUI is among the first generation of student workers producing what's known as dry bot. I receive them, build them, build the whole unit, uh, as well as do a little bit of testing and ship them out. Samantha Miller is a senior studying mechanical engineering. She's working on the dry bot too. A home prevention appliance protecting against groundwater flooding in homes and reducing potential damage. The high tech sump pump will communicate with your smartphone. It's amazing. The technology that they have that they're working on, it's just revolutionary. As Drybot launches, the company is looking to the future, hoping to hire up to 150 workers, mainly students, over the next year. Student employees will assemble, test, and ship Drybot from this facility, working in a style called cell-based manufacturing, which differs from an assembly line. Instead, students are trained in multiple areas of the assembly process, enabling them to build a Drybot from start to finish or pick up on a project where another team has left off. This opens up some scheduling freedom, which could be key for college students. The 
schedule that you work is super flexible. You can make your own hours. If you have to leave early to study or to do something else, they're very, very aware of your needs. If I need to uh, take time off for school, all I have to do is just text my boss. The Drybot company has laid out a commitment to help students since the company's founder and managers worked their way through college. We're sympathetic and we understand the plight of the college student um, trying to balance studying, um, working to make money, and then trying to limit their debt as much as possible. The perks include high wages for student workers, free on-site lunch once a week, free on-the-clock workout classes, a retirement match even for part-time workers, and that flexible scheduling. Another perk, the company provides transportation for students to get to and from campus with these dry bot bikes. The hope is through providing perks and opening a door to college students, graduates may be enticed to stay in the Hoosier State with a career-ready opportunity. So there are constant opportunities here to advance and to test your knowledge and try to get better and challenge yourself every single day. Working for you on Indianapolis's West Side, Mark Mullins, RTV6. Mark, thank you so much. The Drybot Company is already working on plans to expand its facility, allowing for 24-hour access for its student workers. We provided a link for you about this company on our website, HiringHoosiers.com. Just click on Mark's story. You'll get all the information you need. Right now, it is New York Fashion Week. It's all underway. It's where you'll see the latest trends and styles. And so students at the McKenzie Center here in Indianapolis, they're learning how to get into the fashion world through merchandising. RTV6's Erin Lish shows us how they're learning to connect with shoppers while working on their future. Going through the clothes racks. These probably are actually the best jeans. These are more of a slim fit type of vibe. London Clark completes a look in the fashion merchandising program and just in the other room. Um, it's more of a simple sleek look. Students put together virtual outfits. Vintage. Okay, you ought to be able to find a lot because that's the trend right now. Vintage 70s. They go in depth on marketing practices that support the sales of products that you buy while learning how to design. Well, I like to look nice, so I just figured this would be a great opportunity to learn about fashion. They take their sense of fashion and build displays for visual merchandising to attract customers like you in stores. So they can actually see what it's like to create that window at Nordstrom or at Saks. They focus on selling, pricing, retail cycles, and of course, fashion design. This program giving Clark a vision for his future. I can do this now. This isn't something I have to necessarily go to college for. I can start now in my basement just making t-shirts and I could slowly go up and make my own business. For Clark, he wants the glitz and the glamour and to show his creativity and fashion for those on the red carpet. It's really interesting to see how people just wear whatever they want and inspires others. So I want to be one of those people. And that was Erin Lish reporting. Erin, thank you so much for that. You know, job fairs are one of the most common ways to get in front of that person who may want to hire you. Now, the events can usually be crowded, loud, possibly even intimidating. Our Hiring Hoosiers career coach shares how you can make sure that job fair pays off just for you. <laughs> There are a lot of job fairs out there, and some of them let you pre-register for them. So if that's the case, you definitely want to take advantage of that because before you go, it, you'll have some time to look at the organizations that are going to be participating. So that leads me to point number two before you go. Research those companies. Go to their websites. Review each section, like values, missions, goals. So you'll be able to answer some questions that are traditionally uh, asked in an interview like tell me what you know about our organization or why do you want to work here you will have done your homework and be ready to answer that uh, tip number three there before you go is to prepare supplies prepare plenty of mistake free resumes uh, consider your tailoring your resume to specific employers so if you've done your research and you know who's going to be there you know uh, what they're looking for so if you want to take a little extra time you can prepare specific resumes for specific organizations you might even think about doing a mini resume it's really quick and an, and an efficient way to sum up uh, your candidacy and always bring lots of business cards include your email address and your cell phone number on those business cards another tip would be to practice a pitch or an elevator speech 
this should be 30 to 60 seconds long. You, you know, start by extending your hand, a handshake and smile, say hello, and enthusiastically explain who you are, what your skills are, and describe your career goals. The more you practice that as well, uh, the more confident you'll be. Be confident. Thanks to our career coach from C9 in Johnson County. Boy, look, take, have you seen this picture? Live look outside a beautiful, I love our city. Your final look at your forecast next when the news at 7 continues. At Zaxby's. Show you a couple thunderstorms okay. here. Those of you that have had them have known they produce heavy rain in a short period of time. We'll zip to the north and east between Greenfield and Newcastle and then just north of Muncie. Some all out downpours. Hartford City up toward Marion. All of this activity, I think, in the next couple of hours once we get to sunset, which is uh, right at 8 o'clock, then they'll start to lose a little intensity. More tomorrow. Kevin, thank you so much. Our next newscast tonight at 11. Have a good evening.